Today's guest is Ben Lazowski, who is the founder of Regroup Media. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Google Analytics 4 and this pending change that's going to happen right now. So who is this David, you ask? David is the founder of Regroup Media, um, an org that partners with nonprofits to improve their digital communication. They use a proprietary mix of data and empathy to make sure that every interaction feels warm. David leads a scrappy team of skilled professionals that offer strategy, training, and implementation packages that can help you make a measurable impact and help you do more good using technology and digital marketing. So with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to David. So every nonprofit that I need more or less had the same story for me. They'll usually approach me because they want to set up their conversion tracking for marketing or advertising, or maybe they want like their comms team to use data to tell which articles are performing best. And when they ask me to set up GA4 for them, the first question is, how much do you use GA4? Have you already had it set up? They all say the same thing. I look at GA4 once every six months and I spend five minutes in the platform. I see a ton of data. I have no idea what to do with the data. So I close it and don't look at it again. People don't get a lot of value from universal analytics. And that's not changing with GA4 for the most part. Why is this though? So let's take a look at what we're tracking by default in Google Analytics 4. When you set up the HTML snippet into your website and install GA4, here's what you track by default. Page views, scrolls, sometimes you can track form submissions, but it usually doesn't work. Video plays, file downloads, and site search. Now, if that list seems relatively unimpressive, it's because it is relatively unimpressive. By default, here's the hitter. Your most valuable digital key performance indicators are not tracked in Google Analytics 4, and they're not tracked in UA. So donations, most of your form submissions, so this could be service forms, it could be contact forms, any embedded pages or iframes, that data is not going to be available for you to see in your analytics dashboard. It's not being tracked. It's not being measured. There's no way to get that data back, right? So that's the data loss I'm talking about. And that's what we're trying to protect. Now, if you've had these, these events on the right side of the screen, you've had them available in universal analytics up to now, the ones on the right side of the screen almost certainly they're going away. So these are the events that you're going to lose if you don't migrate your setup. Just the importance of tracking your most important KPIs. It's probably obvious, but if you don't know what your ultimate objectives are and you're not able to track those, it's hard to ask the right questions to optimize for those, those events. Now, before this webinar ends, I want to take your analytics dashboard that right now just wastes your time. And I want to turn it into your second most valuable digital asset. So that's a big claim, but it's true. It is that important. And when your team is trained right, it can be that valuable to your organization. So don't panic, but you only have two days to do this because in two days, Universal Analytics stops processing data. You can still access the data, but you can't process new data. And those most important events or APIs that you might have already set up, those are gone forever. So what do you, what actually happens if you don't do anything? If you just let this be and you don't do any sort of migration, Google will automatically transition universal analytics to GA4 for you. So it'll try its best to copy over your goals, your audiences, and your settings, and then just adapt that to GA4. Now, it even mentions right here in the Google documentation, we str strongly recommend you manually migrate your universal analytics settings to GA4. And this is because, for one, they're using old code, so they're trying to adapt old HTML to, to their new program, which isn't a good idea. And the second thing, there's, you just need a custom setup because the two platforms are built fundamentally differently. So I strongly recommend you manually migrate J4. People don't know how accurate this autom automatic transition is going to be. It probably won't be very accurate. The data won't be reliable. And the most important KPIs will be. One other thing, if you've already started transitioning or migrating to GA4, make sure you opt out of this automatic migration. You can do that in your universal analytics property. If you don't do this, Google will just add a ton of settings 
to your to your GA4 account that you don't want because you might have already set those settings up, right? Or better settings. So why should you care about GA4? Google Analytics allows you to track digital user identities anonymously across owned channels and answer questions about your dig digital communications with data. That's a fancy way of saying you can track people and you can answer questions with data because that's ultimately what you're trying to do and how you're you know, using this to further your organization's objectives. What questions can you ask? It's really up to the, what your organization does and what your current objectives are. But here are some common questions that a lot of nonprofits will ask. How many donations did we get last month? How many users filled out a newsletter? <laughs> How many users filled out a newsletter form before donating? What percentage of users from organic traffic donate versus paid traffic? Which of my advertising campaigns are performing the best? Are you ROI positive on your campaigns? What information on your website do people read or watch before they decide to donate? Which articles or topics perform the best on my website? All of this, all of these are questions that can be asked and lead to specifically actionable items, things you can do to improve your website performance. The first part of this talk is going to be about measurement because that's really what's in the time crunch. You want to be able to measure digital analytics and make sure that you're tracking users on your website and storing that data in a structured way so you can later use that in reporting, right? If you don't measure something, if you don't track it right now, there's no way to go back and get that data again, right? That's what has to be set up right now. That's what has the two day time window on it. The reporting stuff, all of that data is in a database. It can be pulled into reports later and you can set up fancy reports. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the talk but we're really focused on measurements for today. Let's talk about measurement philosophy, fun. Here's a famous quote that has, has a lot of baggage, but I really like it and I think it's very useful in this situation. So what gets measured gets managed, even when it's pointless to measure and manage it, and even if it harms the purpose of the organization in doing so. So this really plays into my belief that most people can't get a lot of value from Google Analytics 4. They see all of this data. It really doesn't tell them much, but they still feel strongly about keeping track of this data, maybe even adding it, but there's nothing actionable. And if anything, it's just a waste of your time to look at it because it, it paralyzes you over overexposure to data, too much information. So you really want to measure the right information, not just measure all the information, measure the right information. So that's why we start with a measurement plan. In this, we want to align our business goals, our nonprofit goals. So the macro goals, maybe you want more major gifts leads. Maybe you want more donations. Maybe you want them to sign up to a service or a pledge. So that's the, those are the macro goals. Your website goals. And the, the macro goals can be things in service of people as well. Maybe your objective is to, if you're a hospital, make sure that there is good information about specific services you offer if your university, maybe it's recruiting students, right? So think about your specific case here. Then you have your website goals. How do things people do on your website aid in the achievement of your macro goals? If your macro goal is donations, obviously your website goal is I want people to donate on my website. Pretty simple so far. Then what are your KPIs? What are the events that contribute to these website goals? And what are the specific things I can track? So on your website, that might be how many people donated? What's the average donation? What is the total amount of donations received in the last week or something? What is the conversion rate? So what percentage of people land on my donation and then decide to donate? Think about these, these most important key performance indicators and events that you can track that you would want to see in a dashboard, right? So think about your specific case. What do you want to see in the dashboard? What information would really help you make decisions about what you put on your website, with how you pitch your offer, with who you decide to show your donation page, right? Your donation page, maybe you find that social media people, nobody comes from social media and then donates. 10% of the people that come from your email newsletter decide to donate. Maybe you decide to, you can see that data and you can decide to write your donation page more for the newsletter audience than your social media audience, stuff like that. I hope that's not too often the weed. And then the last thing is writing SMART goals. So 
smart goals require some foundation of data to build off of. But if you know that your current conversion rate is 5%, your smart goal is, well, I think with changing some of the words on my page, we can turn it to 7% 7 in the next three months. And then you can work with your team to do that and see with your Google Analytics 4 data if you were successful in doing so. Next, we have an implementation plan. So this is where we get into techno babble world and a little bit more complicated. We're going to be using a, a tool called Google Tag Manager to be turning our measurement plan into the ability to actually measure events that happen on the website. And I was going to give a demonstration on Google Tag Manager, but due to technical issues, I won't be able to do that today, very unfortunately. So we have our event. The event might be donation. So think of donation. The event name is going to be a uh, purchase. This is just because Google Analytics 4 has certain, a few names that for events that are, I forget the exact word, like static. So for any e-commerce stuff, we need it to be purchased even if it's a donation. We're going to make purchase lowercase. And if it were an event with two words, we'd want there to be an underscore or it won't work. Rigor. And even if you're not going to do this yourself, it's good to think about how this works so you can understand when you get an other agency or one of your communications associates to, to implement this for you. So a trigger, when you want to figure out the conditions under which your event will trigger, right? So when will your event activate? With a purchase might be when custom event comes through your donation platform into Google Tag Manager and you can mark that as a custom event with event name, donation from DonorBox, right? In other cases, if it's a form submission, you might say, when user lands on the form submission landing page, then you trigger the form submission. Last, you can mark off in here which platform you're sending this data to. So you, I'm recommending you set all of this up for Google Analytics for as soon as possible. But if you're also advertising with Facebook or LinkedIn, or you're using another analytics tool, you'll also have to go in and create these events and triggers for these different platforms so that you can mark your con conversions in those platforms. So let's look at the analytics ecosystem. And this might be like an okay time to, to take a break for a second and, and answer some questions. Fabulous. They're coming at us fast. Yeah, there's, a there's, bunch here. there's really oh, yeah, a Ben, why don't you go for them? Yeah, I've just been trying to cut and paste all the questions from the chat into a little text edit document on my Mac here. And so there's been a couple of questions that popped up recently from Adina about questions. And so I don't know if you can see them in the chat or David, but I can repeat them back to you. But yeah, could you read them just because you know, points are in here? Okay, so Anita's first question. If we never really set up our UA properly, is July still, per still an urgent deadline? Or is it just that the sooner we start collecting data, the better? So if you've never set up UA properly, there's nothing extra you've missed. The right. one issue is that some of your data might be slightly less accurate because right. the code that you're installing on your website isn't Google Analytics 4 code. It's universal analytics, universal analytics code that Google is going back and trying to modify through techno magic to send events into Google Analytics 4. See, so you're, you're probably missing something. There's probably a negative still. But yeah, really for that use case, a lot of it is better to set up proper tracking sooner the better. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to see because there's a few folks who asked a few questions here, so let's turn. I know Siju had a few questions as well, so I collected a few. Here's one that she asked. We have a lot of events created in custom events. However, we, are, we aren't seeing it on our Google Analytics dashboard except for standard preset events. Where can we see the data for custom events? So there's weird bugs in Google Analytics 4 because it's a new platform. The first right. thing I'd say is make sure that the events actually are coming into Google Analytics 4 properly. The okay. way to do that is through the Google Analytics 4 debug mode. So you have to go into Google Tag Manager and then go into preview mode and then activate the event through that preview mode. This is okay. like more highly technical stuff. 
Then you go at the mm. same time, you open up a window with Google Analytics for and then go into debug mm -hmm. mode and then make sure that event is coming. You'll, you should be able to see it in real time. Right. Then takes 24 hours for those real time events to process and show up on your Google Analytics for dashboard. You still can't see it there, even though it worked in debug mode. Go into a new explore report and yeah. create a list of all events. So it might not show up in your admin panel where all your events you think they should be. I don't know why, but create a new explore report and make a table with all of your events and it should show up there. Or if I were to, to shorten your answer to the question, basically call you. <laughs> or call me and uh, yeah, I know, I'm joking. hire I'm me joking. to figure Thanks it out. Thanks for the yeah, answer. I know it's kind great. of getting... It's getting long and convoluted as an answer, and you're really doing the best you can to answer the question, given the set of the complex yeah, technical it's... nature of these questions that I'm not sure of the audience of all our tech soup participants here, like what their technical background is like. This will be recorded, right? So hopefully, uh, this yeah, exactly. can be like passed on to a dev team or something. People who sounded like they already have some setup in Google Tag Manager, so probably know. Okay. More or less. Okay. All right, why don't you continue on then and I'll see if there's some other questions. Perfect. I'm, uh, I think we're like, later. we're roughly on pace right now. I still have a ton of slides to get through, so let's get through. It's 1226, so. I, hopefully I'm not speaking too fast. I'm just trying uh, to no, you're good. So the analytics ecosystem. So the way that data flows is traffic comes into your website. This is your user. And then Google Tag Manager, which is, Really, one of the core tools we're talking about today, I should have met, titled the talk Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. Google Tag Manager then parses your data or the, your, the user data into different platforms. So storage platforms. Then from Google Analytics 4, it structures that data, it stores it, and then it also has the option to report it. So Google Analytics 4 is like a pretty good all-in-one tool for data storage and data reporting. You can do really cool stuff with it. One other cool thing worth noting, and I'll try to just get this quick, Looker Studio gives you an additional layer of, of cool things you can do. So you can pull data from multiple different platforms. So this is HubSpot, different donation software from Google Analytics, from your advertising platforms. And you can have all of your data from all of your, your disparate softwares that you use and never check analytics for it. You can have all of that in one super, super organized, concise dashboard. Something that is, that, that is something that I highly recommend for people that have a lot of data all over the place is setting that up in Looker Studio. But the precursor to that is, is Google Analytics for and making sure your website data is set up properly. So I was going to do the live demo of setting up a an event, setting up Google Tag Manager and setting up an event in Google Tag Manager. I can't do this because of tech reasons. There are some YouTube videos that you can look up to, on how to do this. The other thing is I think some of the people in the chat have already set this up. So I don't know what percent of the audience would that would be helpful for. Maybe leave a comment if that is something you'd like to see and we can do that after. So differences between GA4 and UA. We'll just go over this quick because it's, it's not urgent. The big thing is the structure. In Google Analytics 4, unlike Universal Analytics, everything is an event. So everything is made out of the same building blocks, which is the event and then different parameters on that event. So you can see here, you have your event name, which might be generate lead. So this is the title of the event that you create anytime somebody fills in a form. Then you get to put parameters. Which parameters? Any ones you choose. You could put your form name, so the form might be your newsletter form. Now, and later you can go back in your reporting and you can find out, you can create a report for every time that an event triggered that said generate lead that had the parameter newsletter, right? And then you can see everything to do all of those types of events. And then page path. So now you, if you add this parameter, now you can see which page did the person fill out the newsletter form on. Particularly useful if your newsletter letter form is scattered throughout your website, right? very useful. But then you can also create additional parameters with custom information. So you might say one might say what is the color of the car that I'm selling in this form and then the the parameter is yellow if you're able to push that data. 
that's just to say you can have whatever parameters you want. What else has changed? The other big one is privacy. And this really was the catalyst for Google to push forward this, this change. Privacy laws are getting really strict, mostly in Europe, but increasingly in Canada as well. So Google Analytics 4 unlocks a suite of tools to allow us to better keep user data secure and private and compliant with national and international law. One, one of the changes is user IP anonymization. There's no way for you to see a user's IP address in Google Analytics 4 anymore, unlike UA. And then you also have better options for user data storage, retention, and then permissions, whether or not you captured in the first place. One other thing that is very important to note, and I want to preface this by saying I am not a lawyer. So if you are going to make take any actions or take this as, just take this as advice. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. Okay. So saying that cookie tracking is enabled by default in GA4. It is currently probably not, or it is probably legal in Canada to collect cookie data on Canadians without requiring explicit consent. Now, there's more questions about whether or not you need to have an option for them to opt out of uh, cookie data. But right now, it's a gray area. You might want to consult with your lawyer if you're a bigger firm. But to my knowledge, this has never been enforced in Canada. It is, however, being enforced in Europe, particularly to larger organizations. So if you have a large amount of European traffic coming to your website, you will need to add a cookie consent banner. That's just the annoying thing at, on all of the websites that ask you if you consent to have your cookies taken. It's a little banner or pop-up. So it's probably a good idea to add one if you're a Canadian site. Most of your traffic is Canadian. It is required a large amount or technically any amount of your traffic is from Europe. Reporting. So this is the fun part. Now that we've done everything to capture our user data, we want to turn those into useful, actionable reports. You have three options with how you're going to do your reports. You have explorations, which are deep dives into Google Analytics data. You can create really cool graphics and visualizations and tables that show how all the data correlates with each other and then filter the data to just show exactly what you want. You have reports, which by default in Google Analytics 4, show you overviews of all the different types of uh, data that you're collecting. So this is an out of the box feature that you get, but again, its usefulness is tied to how well you measure events in the first place. And then you have Looker Studio, which is another customized option which allows you to pull data from different sources into one dashboard and then run, I guess, calculated metrics that compares your email signup rate with your website's visitor rate, and you can do cool things there. We're, we're, worth noting, but a little more advanced. So let's talk about explorations, which is one useful thing to, to learn, especially if you're already comfortable with universal analytics. Uh, so what explorations do, again, like I said before, it allows you to take deep dives into, into your analytics and unlock a few features that previously existed in UA. So to get there, you go to your Google Analytics account, click on the Explore tab. You can create a new blank report. Then you have quite a few options. So it's a little overwhelming, but you have your segments. So this is groups of people that you can isolate through different parameters to just look at what they're doing on your site. So maybe you only want to look at what people who decided to donate on your site on your site did on your site, right? How they decided to get there. Dimensions show qualitative attributes you want to track, and then metrics are a quantitative measurement. So you add your segments, follow this segment report. One of the things to note is this is the segments backdate, so you don't have to pre-make segments, whereas audiences, you do have to build because they will not pre-populate. 
or uh, pre-populate, they will not, they will not back populate. So it's important to be also while you're creating your measurement, being proactive with creating audiences, not necessarily segments. Okay. So you create your segment, you add your dimensions. So here, what dimensions do we add? We decide that we want event name, right? We want to try and figure out what events, what was the event that people took? And then metrics is how many active users took that event. You can add additional dimensions like country. So you can organize like donations, event, donation, event, which is donation, and then by country, and then the number of active users who, who were donators. And you can create tables. Essentially, you can create tables or funnels that show you this information in a fairly detailed way. So now we're going to explain how to create the funnel report. So here you click on add steps. And what you're doing is you're trying to tell Google Analytics 4, what steps do I want to see that led to a final conversion? So you add your first step, you add your condition. I don't see what we add here. It's our first step is first visit. So we want to see how many people visited the site for the first time. Our second step is session start. So how many people actually started a session, stayed on the page long enough for it to start. Then we want to see which page view they they looked at. And then we want to see how many of those people eventually led to our purchase. And then we're able to see the this report. This isn't going to tell you a lot like this particular one, but we can see that first, first visit, 100 percentage of people started this because that's our first session. Then session started 70%, so 30% dropped off just right away. Then from there, 90% viewed a page. And then one percentage of those people then decided to purchase something. And then you can make additional breakdowns like device category. The other thing is you have your prepackaged Google Analytics for reporting just on the main dashboard. See how much we have? And so you're able to see a ton of data out of the box. There's a lot of customization you can do in these reports as well. You can add a filter. So you can just look at the different data, add a comparison. So compare against two different subsets of your data. And then you can edit your report to include more or less data, the data you specifically want to see, and you can change your time frame. I think this is just going over the different types, but we'll skip this part. Okay, there's a lot of information there. Hopefully I didn't dip into techno babble too much. I'm trying to keep this as accessible as possible. I want the main takeaway to be for everybody in this call right now. One, you have two days to migrate to Google Analytics 4, and this is specifically for measurement. Two, you need custom event tracking to get value from Google Analytics 4. Three, you need to be creating a measurement plan and implementation plan so the data you collect actually aligns with your higher organizational objectives. Four, you should be using a mix of different reporting tactics to get the information in front of the people who need to see it in the most concise way possible. That is the talk. I've also prepared four free gifts for everybody in this call to help them migrate to GA4. So everything you need to migrate from GI4, a migration checklist, digital measurement plan, the tag implementation plan, and a Google Analytics audit for if you have an existing property set up, Universal Analytics or Google Analytics 4. To get that, go to ga4.regripmedia.ca and that page is available there. So that, those, are my, those are my links. I've been David Lazowski from Regret Media. I really like to thank everybody for coming out we're going to go into the Q&A now. So any more questions, let's fire some. We have quite a few questions. Perfect. I answered Perfect. a couple. Did you see Sabrina's question about what is the best way to remove traffic data from internal employees, David? I know a couple of people answered the question in the chat. I didn't. They're referring to if people are coming to wherever you're tracking. Yeah, we've got a question here coming from With Sabrina code. Hernandez who says, what is the best way to remove traffic data from my internal employees so we're not getting all of my test traffic basically showing up and screwing up my reports? Well, I see. 
So there are, there are options for filtering internal traffic in GA4. If you go to admin and then on the left side of the admin panel, there's, there's filter, filter information. You should be able to remove different internal traffic by IPs. So you need the IPs of your work PCs or from the home PCs or personal PCs of your employees. By default, though, bot traffic is excluded in GA4. So that's a bit benefit that you have. Do they know the range of IP addresses or can you set it? Because if someone's on a dynamic post configuration protocol with a dynamic IP from an internet provider or, and they're surfing from home, they got high-speed internet. Can you account for that too or no? I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I just know from my IT background with, with, with a TCP IP, right? It's like, you're on Shutter, yeah. tell us. They have, you can get static IPs, but they also give out, usually they just typically, you have a dynamic address. So I know that's a really nitty gritty question, but people are pinging the site or pinging it and creating traffic. You don't really, I shouldn't say you don't want them to do it. You just have yeah. to know how to filter it because it's screwing up your number. Cool. So I've got a couple of questions coming in here around getting a better sense of your audience. So one of those is from Sabrina, and I think you touched it earlier, which is to say, I'm unable to get all of the IP addresses. And I believe that's because that's a feature, not a bug with the new version. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's a privacy feature, not a bug. You In GA4, by itself, you will not be able to get IPs, IP addresses from your audience. Now, you can install secondary analytics tools or attribution tools that will collect IP data. And then you can merge that with your data in other ways, like in Looker Studio or something. But by default, it's not possible. Right. But there are, of course, other ways still to get a sense of your audience. So Saiji's got a question saying, where can I see data about my audience, i.e. either age, gender, region, for organic traffic only? So right now, the report snapshot shows all the users not specific to organic traffic. And ideally, if you had a safe account to show us the back end, that'd be amazing. But of course, let's not force you into a live demo because those are terrified. Yeah, I would do it if I was on my PC, but I just can't do it on my laptop, unfortunately. So there are a few different ways to create like a really good idea of your audiences. Just to do it off the basic recording, all you would do is set up a filter. So you would set it, look for a part in your Google reports, your acquisition reports that sends filter. And then the condition should be organic traffic. So like session source, organic traffic. And then you can set up a comparison, or I guess the better way to do it. You set up a comparison between organic traffic. And then what was the other type of traffic you wanted to look at? It was mostly they're looking at organic and they wanted there from there to say, basically filter on organic around age, gender, and region. Oh, I see. Okay. So actually, so it's even better. You go to the user settings in Google Analytics 4, then you set up a filter. So session source or session medium organic. And then that will show you just organic traffic. And then the reports are already pre-filled with your, your location, user device, user location, user preferences. That isn't showing up. It's because you have to enable Google signals. And you do that in the da data settings. It'll only tell you once when you set up your GA4 account for the first time, but you need to be setting up these uh, Google signals and some additional cookie permissions for that data to be collected. That's really helpful. Cool. I've got another question coming in from Karen who says, how does Google Analytics 4 handle subdomains? A thing that 10 years ago, I struggled with. So subdomains are counted under the main domain domain. So you shouldn't have any problems with needing to configure cross domain traffic, tracking again, since it's handled under the same domain, it, it should work normally. If any, you have some weird edge case, you can set it so that two domains count as the same session. The other, the other issue that you might encounter is if under your attribution, you're getting the main domain referring to the subdomain or, or vice versa. So the subdomain referring traffic to the main, main domain. You don't want to be seeing that in attribution data. So you can send, un, set unwanted, unwanted referrals, and then it will just block those referrals so it doesn't show you. And it will just revert to the, the correct attribution source. 
Great. Hopefully, Karen, let us know if that got close yeah, to where I... you wanted to in the chat. So I've got another question here coming from Sabrina Hernandez. Oh, sorry. Just okay, to back on what I was about to say, the one thing to remember with subdomains, make sure you install your Google Analytics 4 code on whatever page host that is hosting the subdomain. Otherwise, of course, the data won't be collected if it's not installed correctly. Well, I think this is like a common there. use case, which is like, you've got a third-party platform for your domain, yeah. and so you put it on give.yoururl.com. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you'll have to go back and configure GA4 into that. It might just be as simple as posting in your measurement ID, or you might have to add HTML into the site backend. And so that would be something, if you're working with a third-party supplier, you need to work with those people. Got it. So Sabrina asks, I'd like to know the best way to leverage Google Tag Manager with Google Analytics 4. She understands apparently that this is a loaded question and is yeah. looking for basically some resources that you might be able to share. To leverage, I've already posted some links or my, the link to my website and this, it goes over some basic tutorials on how to use GA4. So in my migration checklist, I go over everything you need to do, a step-by-step -step process of enabling GA Google Tag Manager and then setting up your first events to send data to Google Analytics 4. So what I would do is I would look at those step-by-steps, go step-by-step. -step, and then if you don't understand how to do something, just copy and paste the step into YouTube. Really, Google Tag Manager is a really complicated tool. I've trained employees on how to use it. It's taken them about 60 hours to really become adept at using it, but like to an advanced level. So that answer is really loaded. The real answer is hire me and uh, <laughs> I'll help you with it. Reasonable, friendly, be. and affordable. Here's another question from the high level from Hane, who asks, like basically, Hane is working with an agency and says, hey, make that switch over, but are not totally sure if it's successfully happened. How do you know if the switch over has happened successfully? Is there like, a dashboard we should be looking at, a nice green button we should be looking for? Oh, it's a complicated question because it depends. It depends on what you're trying to see. Again, I'm trying to, I'll push this again. On my website, ga4.regroupmedia.ca, I've included an audit checklist to make sure that everything that needs to be set up and you migrated over is. So I'd go through that and make sure all the settings are proper, properly set up. A big issue is you can have problems with duplicate data. So if you get one person on your site and they donate, maybe that registers as two, as two donations, you can probably guess why that's really bad and messes up your data really quick. Don't want that to happen. So again, we'd get into technical stuff. Go into the debug view of your Google Tag Manager and go through all your most important events and then make sure things aren't uh, events are triggering twice. The other thing is refer to backend data. So if in your donation platform, you're able to see every time a donation goes through, you want to reference that with the donate, the data you're collecting on Google, Google Analytics 4. If it says you made $100 yesterday on DonorBox and on your website, it says you made $500, obviously it's that there's a problem. There is going to be data discrepancies. This isn't a perfect science. Like GA4 isn't perfect. There, they are, there are problems with privacy. So people turn off their cookies. You can't track them. There's automatic privacy tools where you can't track people. Sometimes things just don't work. So it, the data is never going to be 100% accurate. It's more the direction oriented. Like you get a very good idea of what is happening on your website. So it's definitely not perfect, but compare with backend data. And if it's within 80% accuracy, you're probably okay. That's a good insight. Yeah. To let people know it's not going to be perfect. 80% sounds lovely. So here's another question coming in from Karen. And just to let people know, we're going to come to a wrap pretty quick. So this is your chance to get your last questions in before we lose David's time. So Karen asked, <laughs> recently I had some weird DNS error messages that coincide with the update. They're like DNS, probe finished, NX domain. Does that ring a bell or is this one of those better put that error message into Google and pray? Yeah, I'm not familiar with this specific bug with the GA4 update. Pro finish. Is this happening like you're not able to see your dashboard? Is this something that's happening 
in Google Tag Manager or where are you seeing this? I need a little more context and maybe I can. You're not able to see your website. So when you're dealing in, I'll just speak a little bit here. When you're dealing with Google Tag Manager, you are editing the backend code of your website, but it resolves within minutes. That doesn't sound good either. You are editing the backend code of your website. So sometimes there can be conflictions between code you're inserting and some way that your website is coded. So you have to be a little bit careful. If you're doing normal stuff, so just setting up tags, like the way that, that most people will suggest, the way that if you're following a YouTube video, you shouldn't have any issues with this. There's almost no risk, but that can happen if you're trying something really crazy that you don't understand. So I don't know if you were using Google Tag Manager, but try and revert to a previous version. Otherwise, this is outside of my domain, but you might want to go to your web developers or your web hosts and revert to a previous version that could I, I don't I don't even know if that has anything to do with Google Analytics. Oh, I guess with GA4 updates, so it probably does. It might have to do with a plugin, honestly, or some way that you've installed it. I'm not sure. Look to install your GA4 correctly. Again, You're you about to enter, call. though, a very fun journey because DNS is a mystery to all. Not to me. I did DNS after. training. Oh, God, 20, 2000. I did a DNS training at BCIT for my tech diploma because I had to do oh my gosh, TCP IP that Microsoft skills. I had no but idea. But it's a long time ago. So I, that's, I was throwing some comments in the chat about DNS, but I haven't studied it for a long time. And I never did any of the updated Windows or Active Directory or anything. Well, if the two of you want to reconnect after, <laughs> that would yeah, be Yeah, no, it's okay. Let me <laughs> my help this days are over. Let me say, one, David, thank you so much for walking us through this. Chris. And two, for putting together these resources and templates. That's super valuable and gives us some really clear things we can act on. After this call, I'll start working on putting together the video and I'll include the key link to, to David's site as well after this. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me, uh, Elijah and Ben.